the brain, the heart, the kidneys, the liver, the pancreas, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, the lungs, nope, sorry, the vagina. Now, is it just me, or did things get a bit awkward and tense? All because I said the word vagina. The vagina is the tube between the connection. The vagina is the tube between the valve and the cervix. This tube is a connection between the uterus and the outside world. The vagina is what babies exit through during birth, and what menstrual blood exits through during periods. Periods. Now I think it's definitely tense. But for the next 14 minutes, I want you to put your positive pants on and I want you to listen to what I have to say. Periods are commonplace, normal, and healthy, but sometimes it can feel extremely uncomfortable talking about an event that menstruators go through every month. Isn't it interesting that so much embarrassment, awkwardness, and shame surround a natural bodily function experienced by half the population at some point in their lives? We don't hide toilet paper away, yet some women still get flustered if a tampon falls out of the bag, or we're expected to buy a floral patterned tin to put our sanitary pads in it. Wouldn't you find it faintly ridiculous if you spotted toilet paper tucked away in a little bespoke bag? Is it really necessary for us to hide our period products as if they're contraband? Periods happen, by and large, every month. A menstruator will have approximately 350 to 500 periods in their lifetime, according to UNICEF, which means a menstruator will menstruate for more than seven years. Now that is a long time to feel ashamed for existing. There's an issue of menstrual shame, silence, and taboo. Ironically, it's still unacceptable to talk openly about menstruation to make menstruation visible. We are usually limited to horrific PMS woman jokes or menstruation horror stories of the kind that magazines publish. And we socialize our girls to hate their periods before they even have them. And I see this every time I start a menstruation workshop. And every time I come across these girls, it takes me back to my first encounter with menstrual blood. At the time, no one had ever spoken to me about what menstruation is and what its purpose was. Nor had my parents reached the stage of having the uncomfortable birds and bees talk with me. But I remember that day very well. I was seated at the back seat of the school public transport, moaning in slight agony from what I now know to be menstrual cramps. My friends assumed that it was something that I ate and continuously encouraged me to drink water to hopefully flush it out of my system. When I arrived home that day, I remembered my school uniform very vividly because moments later, I had a stream of dark colored blood staining the inner part of my thighs. Now, in that moment, I would not have conceived that 14 years later, I would be championing period positivity. When I announced this event to my mother, a serious conversation about the management of periods was had. Although this conversation was filled with fear and confusion, it was a conversation nonetheless. A conversation that many girls do not receive in this country. Because you see, in this country, there's a culture of shaming around women's bodies, particularly as it relates to menstruation. I've sat in many conversations listening to people talk about how corrupt the world is and that the catalyst for evil was a woman, that this woman was to be cursed with blood. Now, for me as a little girl, that is an incredibly stigmatizing picture of woman. For me, it's like, oh great, so my body is evidence of God's punishment. Because if the blood is inside you, it's okay. 
it's on your finger, it's fine. But the moment it's outside of your body, say for example, you come across a pasta on the floor, that is disgusting because you're identifying that it might not be your blood. The same goes for menstrual blood. When it's inside, it's okay. But when it's outside, say on a tampon or pad, you become weary. Why is it that as a society, we are perfectly happy as seeing women's bodies as sex objects, but the actual biology of our bodies is so gross and unmentionable? Periods are either comedic punchline or the representation on TV of the happy, go lucky girl who menstruates magical blue liquid. <laughs> now, this misrepresentation and culture of silence in relation to the actual lived experiences of menstruators leads to neglect that is dangerous and can potentially lead to human rights violations. This neglect prompted me to embark on my journey on changing the narrative of period stigma. Part of my journey is encountering the lack of menstrual products and lack which inflicts indignity upon millions of women, girls, and menstruators. Because the reality is that there's no dignity without basic necessities such as sanitary products. The lack of these basic necessities forces many to cope in isolation, which further perpetuates a culture of silence. Many menstruators like Belinda are expected to manage her menstruation with no clean materials in a dignified manner. So let's meet Belinda. Every time Belinda has a menstrual cycle, she has to overcome extraordinary obstacles. Besides the plight of her menstrual cramps, her grandmother cannot afford to purchase sanitary pads for her, so Belinda was trained to improvise by using old cotton clothing. In addition to a lack of understanding of physical and hormonal changes in the body, the nauseating cramps, and the lack of sanitary wear, Belinda misses out on school five days a month. Her cycle lasts for over seven days, and Belinda has a heavy flow, which means she sometimes feels scared because she stains her uniform and her clothes, so she can't take the chance of going to school. Belinda has been menstruating since the age of 14 years old. So she doesn't like to speak to anyone about her periods, not her grandmother, not her friends, not even the boys in her life. So Belinda would rather stay at home. She suffers from cramps, insufficient sanitation, and other secrecy challenges. Belinda makes the choice to stay at home and not partake in daily activities when she's on her cycle. So the point that I'm trying to drive here is the lack of consistent provision of basic human rights services has exacerbated Belinda's miseries. Although this was just an animation, the harsh reality is that many girls, women, and menstruators cannot afford to purchase menstrual products, making it difficult to maintain good menstrual hygiene. It's important to understand that menstruation is a critically important issue because it has a more pronounced effect on the quality and enjoyment of human rights than do any other aspects of puberty. We all know that reaching puberty is an inevitable part of human life. We also all know that women and girls' education is critically important, not only for harnessing the nation's resources for development, but also for raising their self-esteem and confidence. Having educated women and girls benefits nations as a whole, by increasing the share of women with a secondary education by 1% per capita, income growth is boosted by 0.3% according to the World Bank. By not providing adequate menstrual health management, countries are losing out between 15 to 30 trillion US dollars in lost lifetime and productivity earnings. Now that is a high cost for not educating girls. So I want us to imagine the possible and alternative scenarios Belinda could go through if she doesn't finish school, if she doesn't go to school. Imagine if Belinda doesn't go to school. She could end up a victim of child marriage. According to UNICEF, 15 million girls are married before they turn 18 years old every year. Imagine if Belinda doesn't go to school. She could end up pregnant. According to the World Health Organization, one million girls under the age of 15 give birth every year. Girls who are pregnant, regardless of their circumstances, will be excluded from school. Imagine if Belinda doesn't go to school. 
She could form part of the 168 million laborers who are vulnerable to human trafficking, forced labor, sexual violence, and many other health issues that form a part of this. And even if Belinda's able to conquer all of these obstacles, she still has to manage her menstruation without adequate water and sanitation facilities, efficient disposable methods, necessary medication, personal privacy, economically viable and available products, and self-care, which further has an impact on Belinda's mental health. Because can you even imagine the mental and emotional strain a schoolgirl has to go through when she's told that she cannot manage her menstruation and she has to use leaves, cow dung, and sand as her only means of managing menstruation? Can you imagine the emotional and mental strain a schoolgirl has to go through when she's told that she cannot cook, clean, and enter a place of worship? Can even contemplate the mental, emotional trauma schoolgirl has to go through when she's being laughed and mocked at because she stained her uniform? Can you even imagine the mental and emotional gymnastics menstruators have to go through when they have to use words that don't necessarily equate to the word periods as a me means of managing period stigma. We've come up with code words. Code words being crimson wave, aunt flow, code red, vaginally out of order, shark week, it's a crime scene in my panty, little red riding hood, the revenge of the womb, tomato sauce, Red robot, girl flu, the red Ferrari, blood festival. No blood should hold us back. Thus, it is important to move from period poverty to period positivity. If you are to claim to be a constitutional democracy founded on the principles of equality and dignity, then we have to prioritize women's issues in our society. And how we can do that is by ensuring that menstruators have access to sanitary products. We can also do this by holding our government to account by ensuring that the policies they implement are inclusive of, me of menstrual health management so that menstruators don't have to lose out on daily activities. Maybe we don't need more high tech and drugs that produce waste, but what we do need is a culture that makes it safe to talk openly about our bodies, a culture that values reproductive health education. It's not all that gloomy though. Communities are making progress as they become aware of this issue. Countries such as Scotland have decided to make sanitary products free for all women. There are various organizations working to ensure that menstruators have access to these sanitary products to ensure that they can go about their daily lives. However, in tackling the bad blood surrounding periods, we need more effort to educate and eradicate the taboo surrounding menstruation. We need to instill a culture where saying the words period and vagina are not met with awkward silence. So I'd like for all of us to close our eyes. I'd like for us to breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. The next breathe out, I want us to all say the word vagina. Breathe in, breathe out, vagina. <laughs> it's important to know that periods are cool. Periods are messy. Periods are liberating. And sometimes periods can be a pain, but there's no reason as to why such an empowering event should not be spoken about. So the next time you spot period shaming, call it out. Do it for the countless girls like Belinda and the girls you see here to ensure that when they do go to school, when they do concentrate in class and they don't feel scared of being bullied because of their period. Strike up positive conversations in your life with your friends, your family, the men and boys in your life. Be a part of a period positive world that makes these menstruators not feel ashamed about something that is so natural and fundamental to life. We've just got to start talking about it 
and we've just got to stop hiding our period products and our periods like they're contraband. Thanks.